unto thee shall all flesh come. Rest eternal, grant unto them, O Lord, and may light perpetual shine upon them. shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. 
he shall feed me in a green pasture, and lead me forth beside the waters of comfort. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. He shall convert my soul, and bring me forth in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff comfort me. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. Thou shalt prepare a table before me in the presence of them that trouble me. Thou hast anointed my head with oil, and my cup shall be full. Surely thy loving kindness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. The Lord is my shepherd, therefore can I lack nothing. of wrath and doom impending, David's word with sibyls blending, heaven and earth in ashes ending. Oh, what fear man's bosom rendeth, when from heaven the judge descendeth, on whose sentence all dependeth. Wondrous sound the trumpet flingeth, through earth's sepulchres it ringeth, all before the throne it bringeth. Death is struck and nature quaking, all creation is awaking. To its charge an answer making. Lo, the book exactly worded, Wherein all hath been recorded. Then shall judgment be awarded, When the judge his seat attaineth. And each hid indeed a ring of nothing on a bench remaineth. What shall I, frail man, be pleading, who for me be interceding, when the just are mercy needing? King of majesty tremendous, who dost free salvation send us, Fount of pity then befriend us. Think, kind Jesu, my salvation, Cause thy wondrous incarnation, Leave me not to reprobation. Faint and weary, thou hast sought me, on the cross of suffering bought me, 
shall such grace be vainly brought me. Righteous judge for sin's pollution, grant thy gift of absolution, ere that day of retribution. Guilty now I pour my moaning, all my shame with anguish owning. Spare, O oh God, thy sublime groaning. Through the sinful woman shriven, through the dying be forgiven. Thou to me a hope hast given. Worthless are my prayers and sighing, yet good Lord in grace complying. Rescue me from fires undying. With thy sheep a place provide me. From the goats afar divide me. To thy right hand do thou guide me. When the wicked are confounded, doomed to shame and woe unbounded, call me with thy saints surrounded. Lo, I kneel with heart submission, See like ashes my country son. Help me in my last condition. Ah, oh, that day of tears and mourning, From the dust of earth returning. Man for judgment must prepare him. Spare, O oh God, in mercy spare him. Lord, all pitying Jesu blessed, grant them thine eternal rest. Amen.
for their entire life. Not that they've ever heard the truth claims of the Catholic Church about it, but they've just heard from in their surroundings, you know, how evil the Catholics are, they believe all kinds of stuff that's not good for them, purgatory, and all those kinds of things. Just live your life, you know, deny it. And then all of a sudden, you read your last and you find yourself in purgatory. Who's going to pray for you? All your friends deny exists. Okay? What do you do? Guess what? We can take care of them, or should take care of them also. The name of the soul. We'll talk about that in a second. But I want to emphasize so pointed this idea of this you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Do we have when we talk about the communion, in particular the, the holy souls, the poor souls in purgatory? We've always honored the dead as Catholics. When I start this, I don't want to get into the debate as to what you can do that body tends to work. I mean, the church has changed their teaching on that over the past several decades. The bottom line of the whole thing is we honor it, no matter what form in which they may wind up. That we are to honor our dead. Okay? St. Augustine said, this isn't something new. St. Augustine, I quote, providing for the interment of bodies a place in the memorials of the saints is a mark of good human affection towards the remains of one's friends. A lot of people step back, what's the big deal? What's the big deal about the body? Okay? It's going to rot anyway. The difference is it make if you bury it or burn it. Okay? What difference does it make? You chop it up. Alright? It's a body. They're, not, they're no longer with the body. They're in heaven. Okay? Well, the one thing that flies in the face of every practice that the Catholic Church has ever considered. It really flies in the face of human nature, even pagan human nature. Because it's human nature, I see this, I've seen it in my own family. When people die, there can be dissension, and there can be absolute separation over arguing over stuff. I want this that belonged to him. You know, Stuff that they use, stuff that they wore, rings, jewelry, uh, stuff that they own, because that's special. You know, they had that the whole time I was growing up. I knew that's mine. You know, these same people who argue over these trinkets, meaningless stuff. Look, yeah, Aaron, Burn, whatever. Here's my body. I want the stuff. Yeah, we're all caught up in stuff. How much more important is the body? How the body, if you know, we want all this stuff and we're going to denigrate the body, the body in which, what was the, for a faithful person, the body, the vessel that did all these good works for our Lord, for the advance of his kingdom, the mouth that spread the gospel, the mouth that took into itself the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord Jesus Christ every time they went to Mass. They will pay, again, in modern, a little attention to that. You know, because it's just a body. They're not there. It lies in the face of the way the church has always treated the bodies of believers. The church has a history of body. You know, some, some of the ways they honor the body are actually repugnant to us. We think about it. You can go to Rome, you go to the Basilica, hey, what's that? That's the head of John the Baptist. If there are a lot of relics. This is this person's hand. This is this person's arm. This is the vial of blood from that person. It's important. It's important because it focuses our attention on the being through whom Christ works. And the church is always honor them. The early martyrs. A lot of the early martyrs, they became martyrs because they would run out and try to bury the bodies of those who had been martyred. And they, in turn, were martyred. They would go up and sop up the blood that was spilled because they venerated so much what these martyrs did for the cause of Christ. 
It's not repugnant. It's not gross. It's veneration. It is an honor. Because as I said before, the body, our bodies are the vessels of good in this world. You never want to lose sight of that. Well, they were here when I alive. It doesn't make any difference. It makes a tremendous difference now. And we should honor the bodies of those who have lived and served our Lord Jesus Christ. And we should honor the bodies. It's important. St. Augustine goes on to say, even if some of some necessity should, through absence of all facility, not allow the bodies to be interred or in such places interred, yet should there be no neglecting of supplications for the spirits of the dead, which supplications that they should be made for all in Christian and Catholic fellowship depart. It's important to venerate the bodies of our dead, to honor and respect the bodies of the dead. It is tremendously more important to make supplications for them, to pray for them, to give alms for them, to try to gain indulgences for them, to celebrate and mass intentions for them, especially the mass intentions. One holy mass, one holy sacrifice of the mass offered for a departed soul is worth more than a million prayers of a million saints for one million years. One mass. That representation of our the sacrifice of our Lord Jesus Christ before the Father. We should do things like that because, again, you're doing it for them. They will do it for you when you get to purgatory. And you will want them to do it for you also. So there's prayers and dulcets and alms and masses that you offer for them.
might have been steeped in menial sin. They do things like that. We pray for things like that. Every now and then the confessor should come to you to pray for our own soul that they have dealt with the same thing. These are the suffrages that we give for these people. Because without these suffrages, they 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 would, they would have no merit at all. You know, I said it before about honoring the bodies of people. And we should, again, I cannot emphasize enough the honoring of remains. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot of people we can give to visitors, but we've got a lot of spaces reserved in the columbarium back there for people who are not members of this parish. If they just think it's a really, really cool thing, their remains should be in some of our masses set all the time. We had one person who chose a spot. I want that one there because it looks out over the mass. Okay? You can have a person who had, and it wouldn't fly here, but some places it would. A person that would have millions and millions of dollars and say, I will give this church a couple million dollars if they would put my loved one somewhere very prominent where like, you'd have to walk around them together. They're never going to forget them. All right? If they go back to their house, they made all their money, and that person's like you know, in the way. If they never prayed for them, that would be meaningless for them. Their position would be absolutely meaningless. It's the suffrages that we do, these prayers, these alms, these indulgences, these masses that we offer up for these people. That's what does it for them. That's what you have to remember. That's what we're doing. <coughs> we're not the whole penitential nature of what goes on. On the day of all souls, and for the next eight days, or for the next seven days, and then for the whole month.
liberation, hope in their troubles, and bring them the joy of thy salvation. Hear us as we pray for those who have died in Christ, according to thy promise, to grant us with them a share in my eternal kingdom, rejoice in the fellowship of the prayers of the blessed Virgin Mary, and always we commend our souls and all people to thy faith and love. O God, whose days are without end, and whose mercies cannot be numbered, Make us to be deep, deeply sensible of the shortness and uncertainty of human life. And let thy Holy Spirit lead us in holiness and righteousness all our days. That when we shall now serve thee in our generation, we may be gathered unto our fathers, having the testimony of good conscience, in the communion of the Catholic Church, in the confidence of a certain faith, in the comfort of a reasonable, religious, and holy hope. In favor with thee, our God, and in perfect charity with the world, all of which we ask through Jesus Christ our Lord. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent of your sins and your love and charity with your neighbors and intend to lead new life following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, drawn in with faith. Make your humble confession of Almighty God and be healing on your knees. Almighty God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge that you are our manifold sins of wickedness, which we, from time to time, most previously have committed by far and word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We earnestly repent, and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of that is grievous unto us, the burden that is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. For thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all this past, and grant that we may ever grant and serve and please thee to this life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. May Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of this great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with heart repentance and for faith turn unto Him. Have mercy upon us, pardon, deliver us from all our sins, for He strengthen us in all goodness, and bring us to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here come the words our Savior Christ has told me to the Lord. The month of the all in that prayer battle our Heavenly Lady. I will give you rest. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that all the people should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul said, If any man said we have an attitude with the Father, Jesus Christ for us. For He is the initiation for our sins. Jesus Christ, King of Majesty, deliver the souls of all the faithful departed from the hand of hell and from the pit of destruction. Deliver them from the lion's mouth, that the grave devour them not, that they go not down to the realms of darkness. But let Michael, the holy standard bearer, make speed to restore them to the brightness of glory, which thou promised in ages past to Abraham and his seed. Sacrifice and prayer do we offer unto thee, O Lord. Do thou accept them for the souls departed, in whose memory we make this oblation. And grant them, Lord, to pass from death unto life, which thou promised in ages past unto Abraham and his seed. Domine Jesu Christe, Rex Gloria, libera animas, omnium fidelium, defunctor. 
take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. Thank you. 
light eternal shine, O Lord, upon them. For endless ages with thy blessed ones, for thou art gracious. Out of the deep have I called unto thee, O Lord. Lord, hear my voice. O oh, let thine ears consider well the voice of my complaint. If thou, Lord, wilt be extreme to mark what is done amiss, O Lord, who may abide it? For there is mercy with thee, therefore shalt thou be feared. I look for the Lord, my soul doth wait for him, in his word is my trust. My soul fleeth unto the Lord before the morning watch, I say, before the morning watch. O Israel, trust in the Lord, for with the Lord there is mercy, and with him is plenteous redemption. And he shall redeem Israel from all his sins. Lux eterna, luce ateis domine, cum sanctis tuis in eternum, we are pius es. Requiem eternam, dona eis domine, et lux perpetua luce ateis, cum sanctis tuis in eternum, we are pius es. Jesus, Son of Mary, fount of life alone, here we hail thee present on thy altar throne. Humbly we adore thee, Lord of endless might, in the mystic symbols veiled from earthly sight. Think, O Lord, in mercy, on the souls of those who in faith gone from us now in death repose. Here mid stress and conflict toils can never cease. There the warfare ended bid them rest in peace. Often were they wounded in the deadly strife. Heal them, good physician, with the balm of life. Every taint of evil, frailty and decay, good and gracious Savior, cleanse and purge away. Rest eternal, grant them after weary fight. Shed on them the radiance of thy heavenly light. Lead them onward, upward, to the holy place, where thy saints may perfect gaze upon thy face. Amen.
might be our king to come as a be our defense against the wickedness of snares of the devil. May God be the only prayer. If thou wilt bring us out of the host of the power of God, for us and thou wilt save from all the evil spirits, for thou wilt not grow to the root of souls. 